So today we're going to be demonstrating how to do um, an intro oral exam for your patients. We would like to uh, first make sure that we have all the things that we're going to need, which would be um, gloves and a light source, which could be um, a light on the wall in the exam room or a uh, pin light. Either one would be fine. And you'll need um, something to use as a tongue depressor, either an actual tongue depressor or um, a disposable intraoral mirror um, would be helpful as well. So we'll start by just having the patient um, smile for us and uh, look at the external part of the lips and uh, just checking for symmetry and any uh, obvious lesions, uh, drying, cracking uh, in the lips, especially at the corners of the mouth in the commissures where we might find um, a fungal infection, angular colitis. This would most commonly be seen in patients who are missing a lot of their teeth or have uh, worn down their uh, teeth or maybe have uh, um, ill-fitting dentures. Um, so if, they, if their teeth have collapsed and the distance between the tip of their nose and the tip of their chin has uh, collapsed, then they may have folds in the corner of their mouth, which would be um, a good environment for a fungal infection. Okay, and then we'll start going inside the lip. So open a little bit for me. And we'll want to use the technique of bi-digital palpation by um, squeezing the tissue gently between our two fingers. And here in the lower lip, we should feel um, some slight nodularity, it's just minor salivary glands, and that's normal. But we would want to take note of any that are tender to the patient or seem to be um, larger, um, stand out more than the others. We would also take note of the uh, mucogingival junction, which we can clearly see here. The uh, melanin has deposited in the attached tissue, the keratinized attached tissue, and then below that we have the non-keratinized movable tissue. And then from there, we would want to move into the buccal mucosa and just look for any obvious lesions there. And it should be smooth and pink and glistening and moist. And we can uh, go up, turn to your left slightly, we can go up uh, and see the Stinson's duct, the exit to the parotid gland. And we can actually feel that between our fingers here and make sure there's no tenderness or swelling in there. And then uh, be sure to check out both sides of the buccal mucosa. We want to be able to see and feel um, as much as we possibly can around the oral environment. Okay, then I'm going to get a, uh, I happen to have a mouth mirror here and we'll say, Ask the patient to say, ah, ah, ah and we're going to ah. check out the uvula and the tonsillar pillars and look for any um, obvious uh, lesions or redness and irritation there, and she looks fine. We'll look at the um, soft palate and the junction of the hard and soft palate, and our patient happens to have what's called a palatal torus, which is a uh, bony growth in the center of the palate, so if you palpate that, you can feel that it has firm keratinized tissue over it and it is uh, um, very firm and bony underneath. It's a totally normal um, uh, pattern there. You'll see it quite often. And then we're just going forward and looking at the rugae, the ridges here in the front and in the incisive papilla just behind the two front teeth. Common areas for injury, so you might see um, ulcerations there, especially from hot coffee or chips or something like that, so it's not uncommon to see um, traumatic ulcers there. Um, a very common thing that you might see, um, especially in smokers, would be where the filiform papillae right in the middle um, tend to um, elongate and don't desquamate the way they normally should, maybe picking up some staining from the smoking, so you get sort of a, a whitish or a tan, brownish, uh, hairy tongue, we call it, um, but it's not uh, detrimental to the patient. Then we want to look along the sides of the tongue as well, checking out the lateral border of the tongue and all the way at the base or the root of the tongue, so all the way in the very back. So we pull the cheek back a little bit so we can see all the way back there. The most common place for intraoral cancers is all the way at the root of the tongue, so we want to check that out good along both sides. And then we'll look underneath the tongue, ask the patient to stick their tongue to the root of their mouth up on the inside. There we go. And we'll note the underside of the tongue, very thin mucosa, so we can see a lot of vasculature there. We can take note of the uh, lingual caruncles, which um, house the uh, exits from the submandibular and sublingual glands, Wharton's and Bartholin. 
And then uh, the last thing we'll want to do is check out the teeth and gums themselves. And uh, if we want to number the teeth, a very common numbering system is start at the upper right with tooth number one, which is the wisdom tooth, and count your way across to number 16 on the upper left. Also the wisdom tooth, drop down to the lower left, number 17, and then back around to the last wisdom tooth, number 32. So if we look at her teeth, and we're looking at the um, gingiva here as well, looking for obvious swelling and inflammation. Healthy gingiva will be um, um, a nice pink color and will lay flat and smooth against the um, tooth. And the interdental papillae will fill the space between the teeth. If we see wet redness and swelling along the edges, then the patient may have some gingivitis. If we see a lot of inflammation and the papillae are not filling the spaces in between, and especially if the teeth are a little bit loose, then the patient may have a form of periodontitis, which is uh, where the supporting structures of the teeth um, are involved as well. Okay, I think that concludes our intraoral exam.